Okay. All right, so I'm gonna move through this really quickly. Um, I moved here recently from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I was on the board there. Um, last year, I did a disc golf camp for kids and it had a good turnout. We only did a four week program. It was through the center. Um, I went through different kinds of shots, some of the rules, it was a great time. Um, I've been a member of the PDGA for three years now. I am a, a co-commissioner of the HWBL, which I'd love to get into more. Um, you're welcome to ask me, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna keep it moving here. Um, I set the course record at the only disc golf course we have here in town, Heritage Park, this past year, and I am the president of the club. All right, so this is just kind of an overview of the project with Plain Wave, really a partnership that I think is built to last. Plain Wave has been very welcoming and they are gonna maintain the whole property. And that's the great thing about Disc Golf too is you've got all this space that you already have that you're maintaining. Why not put a Disc Golf course in? Um, so we're gonna kind of move through that. This is kind of my timeline. My goal is to raise $20,000 by the end of quarter one of 2022 and then have the course installed this summer. So what is disc golf? Some of you may have never heard of it. Some of you are familiar and have played. So um, I was talking to Jeff Bowman. He was like, oh man, I used to go back. We would play target golf. You know, we'd have a stop sign, we hit this. And that's kind of the beginnings. And really it all started with the first disc, um, which was actually called the Pluto Platter. So that was the name that preceded Frisbee in 1957. Whammo came out with the Pluto Platter. The next year they changed the name um, to kind of, they changed the name and misspelled it intentionally to recognize Connecticut's Frisbee Pie Company, which was kind of recognized as the first people as their pie tins were kind of the OG of Frisbees. Um, so then some time went on, the first basket, I have a little demonstration miniature basket over here, was actually invented in 1975. And really from there things started to take off and um, today, it would blow your mind. Disc golf professionals are making millions of dollars. So here we are in this time that, you know, what's gonna happen as we move forward? Well, this was just last year, the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship. Um, one thing that's really cool about the Disc Golf Pro Tour is they have really focused on bringing women into the sport as well. So. Um, one thing they did with payouts for this tournament was they had the same little pay, uh, payouts for men and women. So that's just a brief history, and this is kind of where we're going moving forward. This was 2020 um, Disc Golf Round Score on New Disc. It's an app that you can use to track your scores. Um, tripled basically in 2020. So as we moved into 2021, it was kind of like, where you know, is this going to continue, or is this just because of COVID and some of the results there? So. This is kind of just a graph showing how disc golf courses have continued to grow um, and really have started to take off in the past few years. Actually, 5.28 courses are being built per day um, and 70% of the courses of the over 13,300 courses in the world are in the United States. Um, wanted to briefly highlight the Paul Macbeth Foundation. Paul, Mac Paul Macbeth is considered the number one disc golfer in the world by many. Um, he has a $10 million contract with Discraft, who's based in Michigan. Um, he started, started a foundation specifically for getting disc golf into underprivileged areas and countries and um, really has a focus on kids, which I think is awesome because that's a lot of what I'm trying to do here. So these are just some campus benefits um, of this project. It's inexpensive, $20,000 for a whole course. I mean, you guys deal with money all the time. You know, that's probably, that's on the cheaper end of, you know, basketball court you're spending way more. So um, it's healthy. You're getting your steps. It's something easy that people can do. It's a lifelong sport um, and you can be as competitive as you want with it. And yeah, it's year round activity. I actually play in the winter. I'm a little bit crazy, I guess, but um, you can do it as long as you, you're bundled up. So this is what we're looking at with this course. 18 baskets, just like a standard golf um, course. Um, and we call them baskets or holes, same thing, similar to golf. You're basically trying to get it in to that basket with the disc and the fewest amount of strokes as possible. So I'll just I'll just demo real quick for you. So this is you know like a miniature version, but basically you throw it in, the chains catch it, and it, and it stays in. Okay. So um, kind of what I'm working towards is a, a few different things. I'm looking at partnering with the um, the Arts Institute, 
on the campus there and um, as well as the Woodworking Institute for signs, um, <coughs> info board, different things we're doing and the tee pads are usually cement so that's what we're doing for those is like the throwing area that you throw off of. Um, these are just some design elements. Um, I, I just want to highlight the last one. One of the, one of the things that I think is really cool and where the sport is moving is in, on the putting areas you have these obstacles and so I'd love to highlight the arts by making some artistic obstacles on these putting areas which I think would be really unique and um, just ex an exciting uh, draw that'll bring people in. Another thing I'm just going to move through this real quickly. Uh, this is just a, uh, okay. Some of the things that make good courses. So when disc golf started, pretty much every hole was a par three. So as we've moved forward, people have started saying, hey, you know, we need par fours, we need par fives. And a lot of times these courses that now have par fours and par fives have become really popular. I mean, people want to play them just because they've got a par five or a par four. Um, so I'm really excited to work with Plane Wave because their campus is great. And I've actually got a couple par fours, par five designed out there that I think will be a great draw. Um, this is just a couple other examples of different things that have been done in putting areas. You can see here, the bottom right picture is actually a course that's in Missouri where a gentleman that owns a large construction company has poured $2 million into his property for this disc golf course which may sh sound shocking to many of you to think, wow, disc golf, there's that much money that's starting to be poured in? And the answer is yes. So it's exciting to see how things are moving. So quickly, this is just the location at Plain Wave. This is the layout that I proposed to them. Um, and I've kind of revamped it. I've actually moved towards this layout number two that I think is what we're gonna be looking at as the course. Um, here's just some of the course par. What we're looking at funding wise for eight, uh, well, 21 baskets, cause I'm looking at having a few practice baskets. We're looking at $8,000 and you can kind of see the rest here, but um, yeah. So here's just a picture of a basket. This is one from Discraft. I haven't decided exactly yet who we're gonna go through, but um, Discraft and MVP Disc Sports are actually both based in Michigan. I'd love to support them being Michigan companies. Okay, I'm just kinda, this is just an example of a tee pad. T sign, uh, this is the sign at the beginning of the course that would have the map and any information. Um, move. Okay, so this is kind of the big part of what I'm doing right now. I am in the fundraising stage. So um, we are getting sponsors for T signs. And as you can see here, this is a T sign uh, depicted on the right. And below it is a sign with usually a sponsor. Now ours are actually gonna be a bit bigger for the sponsors. They're, they should match actually the same size as the T sign itself. So we're doing sponsorships for $750 a sign. That money will go towards the baskets, the um, T signs, the T pads, and we're hoping to scatter a couple benches throughout the course as well. Um, and then we're also doing info board sponsorships. So for this, you know, info board, it might look similar to that. We're going to have um, sponsors on that as well, and those sponsors will be, you know, real big on the info board. And so, yeah, um, with Joe and the Lenaway Community Foundation, I'm working with them. They've been very gracious to have me work with them and have a fun there. And so, any donations that I'm getting will go through the foundation, and then I, you know, can work with them to get the money from the fund to do what I need to do to make the course happen. Here's just my timeline, and I wanna highlight the last thing on the timeline, and basically that's youth league and competitive league. So one of my passions really is coaching. I mean, you heard in my introduction from Carrie about coaching youth and, and different levels. And one thing that I really would like to do is start youth disc golf leagues. Um, I feel like I've really been gifted in this area and I'd love to use my biggest passion now, which is disc golf, which is kind of crazy. I, I played basketball, baseball, football growing up, all these different sports. You know, I've been in a spike ball. I don't know if some of you have seen that on ESPN or heard of that, but this really has been a staying sport for me. It's got all the elements of golf, but you can play it so much more quickly. You know, I think for a lot of people, I had a buddy that I worked with in Fort Wayne um, and insurance and you know it was like man 
I, I love golfing, but I have to go spend four hours away from my family to go get around and golf them. And it's expensive. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> and it's expensive. <laughs> What's the problem? Yeah, yeah. So, you know. I'll make sure this, Rachel knows. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I'll be getting you a Travis out there That's with fine. You. But, but, yeah, I mean, you can go play a round of disc golf in an hour, hour and a half. The discs are like 10 bucks, 10 to 20 bucks a piece. You really only need one to go play. Um, you know, the barrier, barrier of entry being so low too with courses not really costing any money to play at, I think the statistic is 90% of courses are free to play. So you've got something that's an extremely low barrier to entry. It's tons of fun. I mean, I love golf too, don't get me wrong. Um, but there is something fun. I think, I mean, most of you have probably thrown a frisbee in your life. There's something unique and fun about watching a disc fly and being able to, you know, shape it. So I want to do that with the youth and kind of run some leagues and we're already moving in that direction. So College Disc Golf is an organization that is obviously for colleges. And so here's just a few of the schools you may recognize their logos that have college disc golf programs right now. And I'm excited to announce, this is probably a little premature, but Adrian College is in the process of getting a team. They're actually hoping to, they might not have the Adrian backing this year, but they're going down, I believe this spring to play in the College Disc Golf Championship. So pretty cool to see, we are getting some movement, things are happening. Um, and so, you know, here's some of my goal of what I'd like to do is I'd like to get some of these schools get together. Um, and, and, you know, we've got enough schools here that we can play each other right here in town. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Here's just some of the open hours and, uh, yeah, let's send this course to or orbit.